What's up guys, Andy here at MVP Java. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Java 12 switch statement, right? So lots of new things going on there, lots of new syntax that we're gonna cover. It's gonna be really great. So first thing is that you're gonna to go to my GitHub account and you're gonna copy this link over here. And that'll allow you to follow along the entire tutorial and play along with the examples that I provided, okay? So it's really simple. You're gonna clone this thing. Take a second to do that. You see a little directory pop up there. I'm going to change into there. And you'll notice there's a whole bunch of JShell script files. Okay, so we're going to use JShell uh, to demonstrate the switch statements. And uh, by doing so, by keeping them into files, it's going to allow me to, um, you know, not have to type everything out and you not have to remember everything. You can actually reuse these files. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. Before we actually get into it, let me just open up everything with JEdit so we could eventually follow this. And then all you got to do is do run.sh. And what that's going to do is it's going to start a Docker container with JDK 12 and the JShell uh, prompt will be uh, open. And then you can just start executing all of these scripts and playing around. Now, there's one by default that I've already had execute for us. And uh, this is actually a message from one of the switch arms that we're going to look at, okay? So we're going to re-execute this in a second. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Well, let's take a look at the run.h uh, script first because there's a very important switch here, which is minus minus enable preview. Um, what happens is, is this new switch syntax, right, is only available as a preview feature, which means that it's not part of the GA release. And what the hope is, is that if it passes um, the review process, uh, it will make its way to JDK 13, okay? So right now it's considered an experimental feature which can be turned on with the minus minus uh, enable preview um, flag there to JShell. You'll also need it if you're working with Java C and Java, right? So if you're doing on this a command line, compiling class files and running it after, you'll need that. And for Java C, you'll also need the minus minus preview space 12, okay? So these are both needed for Java C and Java, and there's one missing that I just mentioned, all right? So you'll notice that I'm actually executing this script right off the bat. So let's go take a look at that. And all that is, is the original switch statement, okay? So you'll notice that in JShell, we're, because there's a script file, I'm not, you know, closing this up in a class file or anything like that. These are all code snippets, right? So we'll take a look later on how all these code snippets can be referenced inside a JShell and executed individually. Actually, because it got executed by default, you can already have access to this. If you say slash list, you'll see that exact file that I just showed you and every code snippet is prepended with a with an index number and you can actually say slash one and re-execute that individual code snippet in JShell. So it's really cool. Okay, so here is an enum that is representing different subsystems in a satellite, right? So we have power, attitude control system, thermal and communications. So we pass in that enum into this method that calculates the power uh, output for each one of those subsystems. And we save, you can take a look here at each switch arm, really all each one is doing is calculating the power consumption of each subsystem and storing that in a global variable. Well, it's, a, it's really a local variable in this, in this method, but we'll talk about scope in a second and why I said actually global there. Okay, so what we're really doing is we're kind of decorating the switch statement as um, a switch expression because what we really want is to assign a value based off some calculation in each switch arm, okay? So that is something that's not supported out of the box in Java until now. So we're gonna take a look at that in a second. The other one is it's verbose. So for what it's trying to do, we always have to remember to put a break statement in each one of the switch arms because as you know, if you don't, you'll fall through to the next case. So we always have to look out for accidental fall throughs or make sure that we don't put a break if we do want the fall through to go, okay? The other thing is, is the case statements themselves on the same line. If we want multiple labels on the same line, we have to repeat the case statement. So this is starting to get verbose, especially when you consider that for enum types, 
we have to put a default case there. That's usually never ever going to get executed unless you change that enum at runtime and don't recompile. Okay, so there are some improvements to be made here uh, that have been made that we're going to take a look at. But overall, uh, it's verbose for what it's trying to do. And also, we are missing some very powerful features in this uh, version of JDK 12, which eventually is going to make it to JDK 13, which is going to be pattern matching, which is going to be really cool, and also exhaustiveness uh, over sealed types. So hold on for just a minute and I'll explain all of that, all right? So if we wanted to execute this, this, this script in JShell once again, what you would do is you say slash open. Now everything gets copied to the root directory, okay? And you say tab and you'll get all the files there that are automatically copied there, okay? Because there's a volume uh, bind mount in the Docker um, script that I wrote, the run.sh. So where are you? Switch demo original, there it is. Execute it and you'll see 141 uh, milliwatts of power for the attitude control system. So what happens is I define the enum here of type ACS and I pass it to the method, right? So this one gets ex executed here. And uh, next thing you know, it's 140 plus one. Last thing, last big pain for the switch statement, the original switch statement has to do with scope. Over here in this switch arm, you think you're creating a local variable, but actually you are not. Every variable that you define in a switch arm actually has global scope in the switch. Right, so you can see here in this case, I can actually reference this globally scoped variable. So there are ways to get around this, but they're error prone. And um, they've actually fixed this in the new version of the switch statement that we're gonna take a look at. So enough about what's wrong with the switch statement. Let's take a look at the new switch statement. So here it is. You can actually see right off the bat that we have new syntax. It's not as verbose and there is a lot going on here. So let's, let's start with the basics. One is you notice right away that the switch statement is returning a value to the power variable. You can see this equal. So we're actually treating this now as a switch expression, right? Not just a switch statement anymore. And because of that, you're gonna to have to put the semicolon on line number 18 there, else that's not gonna work, right? You'll also notice that on the case here of multiple labels, we don't have to specify a second case keyword. So we have comma separated labels, which is really nice. Third thing is, is we have a new syntax in terms of the classical case with the colon, and now we have the arrow sign. So it's very reminiscent of a lambda expression. And the nice thing here, is that anything to the right of the arrow sign is basically assured to get executed and nothing else. So it's only what's to the right of the arrow that gets executed. And because of that, you don't need a break statement to make sure that you go on to the next case, like an accidental fall through. So that's a really nice thing. Now, that makes it less verbose, right? The right, there's only three things that can happen on the right of the arrow, okay? You have to basically uh, return one of three things. One is an expression. So over here, I'm returning an expression here. Over here, I'm returning an expression. Two, a block of code, okay? So over here, you can see that in this block of code uh, at the end, I'll explain the scope in a second, but I'm basically calculating the power outage. And I'm using break to return that value. So break has also been um, enhanced to return a value. So don't get confused with the return keyword. That's not going to work. Okay, you have to use the break with a return value. Now, because this is being used as an expression, the power variable here is expecting something to be returned back from one of these cases. Okay, and the third thing that you can return from uh, the right of a, an arrow case is um, an, an exception, okay? So if for whatever uh, reason, there was a condition in here that didn't allow you to properly calculate the power outage, you can say throw new, whatever, runtime exception, and then that would be uh, compilable, okay? There'd be no problem with that. So that's there's a lot of great things going on here to really reduce 
uh, the verbosity. You'll also notice that the default case statement is missing. There is no default here. You can put it, but you don't have to anymore. And that's because now the compiler is checking for exhaustiveness for enum types only. All right. So this is an enum type here. So the compiler is actually checking, hey, there's, you got four of them up here. You have four of them down here and you do. So it leaves you alone. But if I would add a new one, Right, it would definitely complain and give me a compiler, and I'm going to give you an example of that in a second. Okay, so just by not having to write that default case, it also um, you know reduces the level of verbosity. You'll also notice that scoping is a lot better in this new switch statement. So whenever you declare a variable in a switch arm, this is actually for real a local variable. If you would reference this, let's say in this case, that would be a compiler. Okay, so you actually have local scope now in each case. If you wanted the same name, there's nothing that stops you from redeclaring that variable with the same name, but it would have its own scope, right? So there's a lot of good things that have happened now in the new switch statement. And we can actually go and execute this new one here. So we can say open root and we'll execute the new one, JDK switch demo new. And you'll notice that now the ACS system is giving us 60 milliwatts, right? So over here, the same thing, I pass in the ACS, comes in here, and 30 plus 20 plus 10 is 60, and the break will return that, okay? Let's take a look at the exhaustiveness issue. Same example, except I added an extra payload enum type here. Notice that I didn't include it in the switch, right? I commented it out. So if I actually run this right now, you're gonna get a compile error I think it's called exhaustiveness, right? You'll get a compile error, a nice error message saying the switch expression does not cover all possible input values, which is right. So now we have exhaustiveness support for enum types, okay? If I put this in and I rerun this example, everything should be okay and I go back to 140 milliwatts of power, right, for the ACS, which is exactly what's going on here, okay? So that's pretty cool. A lot of nice new features, a lot of nice condensed syntax, and now you guys are ready to rock with the new switch statement. The only thing, like I said, that's missing to really make this fully complete would be for you to have um, pattern matching capabilities, which is part of JEP 305, which I put the, in the description below. Okay, that'll be out in JDK 13. And also exhaustiveness, not, over, not only for enum types, but for seal types, or so for example, integer and stuff like that. So that'll also make it much more uh, powerful construct to use out of the box in JDK. So one last thing I wanna say before going is you can still use the old syntax or the new syntax. But it doesn't mean that if you use the new syntax that you can only use the new syntax if you want to use it as an expression. You can still use the old syntax way with uh, this expression built, okay? So for example, case, power, colon, that would work as well. So you go on with the old syntax and you can use it as an expression as well. You can take a look at my blog post at mvpjava.com and the article goes into a little bit more detail on each of these uh, improvements. And I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know what's going down in the comments below. And uh, that's it, guys. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Until next time. Ciao.